Stephen George Bull. Born March the 28th, 1965, at 153 Leebrook Road, Wensbury, in the West Midlands. The third of six children and the eldest of two sons. When he was three years old, the Bull family moved to Tipton in the heart of the Black Country, and it was here at number two South Road that the young Bull grew up. His first football experiences were gained on the traffic island that serves as Wembley for the youngsters of South Road. Little realising that one day this would lead to his stepping out onto the genuine verdant turf of Wembley itself, representing his country at international level and playing alongside modern day footballing heroes like Gary Lineker, Paul Gascoigne, Brian Robson and Peter Shilton. Although never a top scorer academically, physical education was always high on the list of priorities for Steve Bull throughout his career, which began at Ocker Hill Infants and Wensbury Oak Junior Schools before moving to the local Willingsworth High, where he played in his first organised matches. Every footballer always says, I've always wanted to play football for as long as I can remember. When you were at school, was there anything else that came into your mind that you thought, I'd like to have a go at that? Not really. As I say, I was, I was out there as a old ball, you know what I mean? Boots tied up your, your shins, like whatever. I always wanted to do it, be an all in all uh, footballer. Nothing else ever come, come across. Did you have these great games in the playgrounds at lunchtime where you line up against the wall and pick sides? And well, you used to do, you, we used to do things like that. As I say, I used to go back, go back home with ripped trousers, grey shoes, new shoes, stuff like that, coat ripped. What I used to like to play in goal on the car park and stuff like that. But uh, as you say, them days are gone now. What about school itself? Uh, were you a good studier or not? Not all that well. As you say, I was like, the only lesson I always wanted to do is PE. That was about the only one. The other ones, I just went through the exams as well. Thingy, uh, as I, I was a dumb person, but uh, I'm not that dumb. Where did you sit in the class? Were you the kind of guy that sat at the back in a row four? Or? No, I like to sit at the front, but out the way. Oh, <laughs> that's that's the see you. That's it, yeah, they could see what I was doing, but they, you know, I, mean, I wasn't doing it too well. I said uh, a lot of people have credited you with the discovery of Steve Bull and it's true that you were the first uh, man to really recognise his, his abilities I think. Yeah well I was put him in mind if I didn't shoot him really you know that was the idea that he took in the first place you know so, at the time I don't think I was scouting for the Albion when he was 13 you know I was friends with Woodrow have been the Albion's chief scout you know but I uh, used to bury players from your team occasionally. But you saw, you saw Steve playing in a, in a little game over the back of your house I believe. Yeah there was a match on uh, the Willings of the Schools, see, and uh, I noticed him uh, beavering away, the smallest player on the pitch, playing up front, got goal pouch in the bullet thing, having shots at goal, wasn't scared to miss, you know, and I thought, well, I'll ask him to play me in two years time when the game's ended, if he'll come and have a game over Tipton's yet, you know. Got a good shot on him then, as well as he yeah, on that? Yeah, he can hit the ball, although he's fairly, I think he's timing really with him, I think he's got good timing. Because he was physically a, a late developer, wasn't he? Oh, he was very small. Uh, even when uh, I had him in the youth team, he was, uh, he, although he started to grow, he still got no uh, strength in him. He was very frail. He, he was getting taller. And, uh, but he could only score goals. A professional football career was a distant dream in July 1981 when Steve commenced work on a youth opportunity scheme with bed manufacturers Vono. From there, he worked for two other local firms, Wilner Building Supplies and Dom Holdings, now Unifix. At the same time, he was making a name for himself in amateur and Sunday league football. Alf, now, you had uh, Steve Ball playing for you on a Sunday morning. Some people will probably find it difficult to believe that uh, Steve Ball was playing Sunday league football, but uh, you indeed had him there with your, your Sunday side. Yeah. What, what, uh, what made you want to sign him in the first place? Well, S Steve's exceptional pace was the, uh, the thing that first caught my eye with him. I mean, even now, I mean, people talk about his, his touch and that. I mean, I, I think people in general know that he ain't a great footballer as such. But um, his appetite for the game and uh, the sheer pace of the lad, you know. Now you, you used to go along and, and pick him up in the mornings to take, right. him, take him to play because he got no transport and that's he was right, yeah. nervous before the games, I gather. But he didn't always get a game, did he? Oh, no. No, sometimes he had to, uh, he had to take a back seat and... and, and watch from the sidelines and, and, and that's all part of, uh, uh, of being a footballer, you know, it's, 
it ain't always roses as he, you know, he finds now. Now you're one of his, his biggest fans. You've always oh, sure. said that you think he's, he can do it at any level, yeah. and, and he's, but he can score he's, goals. That's right. Level. That's right. Yeah. I mean, uh, like I said, when he was in the even in the fourth division, and he was scoring goals regular, and people used to say the knockers in the game would say, "Oh, but he will score at an higher level." And that. but when you've got the pace that he's, he's got, he, he, he'll score f for you know Wolves, England. Whoever, you know. Do you remember any particularly spectacular goals that he scored in, in Sunday morning football? Well, it's, that's difficult to question to ask really, Phil, because he, he basically he scored, um, on average, a goal a game for me. Yeah. So, um, the, the, only thing, the only one that springs to, to mind, I mean, um, it was a cup final when we played um, the four in hand, and we'd lost to them the week before in the cup final, yeah. when I told Steve, this is when the Albion at first said that they wasn't going to give him uh, uh, the contract. And Blackpool were apparently... Well, Blackpool was, was, was on his trail, but I'd got a Stoke City scout coming to the game, and I thought, well, I'll give him a bit of a boost and tell him, like, I've got somebody here to, you know, who's watching him. He had a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> we lost the cup. Yeah. Stoke City scout went away. The second week, we played him in a game, the same side, four in hand, the team who Brian Robson used to be a sales with when yeah. he was at the Albion. And um, we beat him 3-1, but he scored two cracking goals. No, if he no, play, no, if no, played well the week before, he could have signed for Stoke. Yeah. But he, as he was, he went to, to Albion. As he, as he was, the Albion changed the minds, and uh, I think that's all a bit of sense in the end. And, um, well, rest yeah. breaks for himself, then. I took him in the first Monday of the Christmas, after the Christmas. And uh, told number stars, number stars asked me about him. I told him he couldn't play for Toffee. Why did you say that? Well, he hadn't got much uh, control, you know. And uh, nobody said, what's his good pricing? And uh, I said, well, he scores goals. And, and he said, that'll do for me. Well, the local scout recommended him from a lad a chap called Sid Day. And he's the local scout for us, bro. And he recommended this young striker. At, uh, but he was 19 years of age. And we thought he was a little old. But with Sid Day's recommendation, we brought him in training. And he used to come in and train at the night time. And that was with the 14 year olds. And Steve was 19. So I showed that, I always thought I showed another character to come in and start training with the youngsters. And so then uh, we put him in the 18. For us, and he played in the 18. And every week he played in the 18 for me, he always scored one or two goals. But one of the big things was he, he missed goals. You know, he was always going to get chances in a game, 100% all the time. And he, he used to wear defenders down. He'd never give him a minute. And I always thought, well, I was a defender. How would I have liked to play against him? And I, I thought that was the way I, I, I wouldn't. So anyway, he, he did well, he did quite well, and uh, I recommended to John Giles to sign him pro. And John said, well, we played in the reserves for a few while, uh, for a few games, and he played in the reserves for a few games, but he didn't do much. And then I found out why, really, he hadn't been showing much in the reserves, but he was coming and training for me on a Thursday night, working, the next, working on a shift the next night. Uh, and I know that the work he was doing was very hard, I forget what it was, but it was hard work, and he was working till the early hours of Saturday morning. Coming to play for me on the Saturday morning, we might travel from 8 o'clock or something over to Nottingham, play. I always scored one or two goals. Played in the afternoon for, for Tipton, and played on Sunday for the local side. And then on the Monday, he was back in work on the shift, and on the Tuesday night, he came to play for the reserves. He had no energy. So I said to John, well, I'd recommend a signing pro, and he says, what do you think? So I said, I think so. I would recommend signing pro, so he signed pro. And again, he started to score goals, he always scored goals. Despite impressive goal-scoring performances and occasional first-team appearances, Bull failed to persuade West Brom manager Ron Saunders of his merits, and Saunders subsequently transferred him to nearby struggling rivals, 4th Division Wolverhampton Rivers. I think it was a very big disappointment for Stevie, yeah. It, to say he was anything less was because as I said he was a Tipton boy and he'd, you know he'd, he'd been given the chance at West Brom and he, he used to love playing for them. Um, but I think uh, to be fair, I think it was the right thing for him. You know, people said I'm sure I'm sure West Brom would you now look back and say, well, wish we'd have kept him and you know and have had this and we've had that. But I think it was the right thing. I think Ronnie Saunders did the right thing for him because he wasn't really getting his chance there and. Uh, he went away and I think it gave him that much more belief in himself as well. And he was going to show everybody, which he has done. And I think, uh, it's, it's, you know, I think Ron Saunders was right for that. Obviously, for a team like Wolves, being steeped in the tradition and the history that they've got, playing in the fourth division must have been uh, 
a di real disappointment. Well, it was because when I first went there, I the played Chorley, Chorley away at Bolton Ground, and I thought, oh, what have I come to? You know, I mean, I lost one 0 and I thought, oh, what have what have I come to? You know, I mean, and then the next three games we lost three 0 on the trot. I thought, yes, definitely, what have I done? Yes, I think the um, re-emergence of the club as a force in English football has gone hand in hand with, with Steve's achievement. Um, I think as a manager and as a coach, you get a lot of satisfaction seeing a boy that you take from uh, second division club's reserves and watch him develop into an international player. Um, there's some hard work gone into the development of Steve. We've, we've worked hard with his finishing, his first touch, things like that, but uh, uh, we've got to recognise how much the boys put into the game and how much he's improved himself um, and he's had a tremendous attitude to work he's wanted to, to get better he's wanted to prove people wrong at West Brom who were prepared to sell him uh, I think that's been one of the motivating forces behind his um, images uh, he's treated like a god now by, by the people on the South Bank and the John Island stand um, and he really has emerged as uh, I would say uh, the most professional player that I've ever worked with or played with in terms of his ability to do the job that he's paid to do and that is obviously to score goals and I've never come across anybody better at that job than, than, than Steve does it. That's towards Bull now, he's in with a chance and he's found the back of the net! Well, he's really... I was here when we signed Steve in November 86 and uh, the directors uh, put up the necessary cash to sign uh, Steve and Andy Thompson on the same day. That was a big risk at the time, wasn't it? Well, that's right. I mean, there wasn't a lot of money about. I mean, the club, right from since it started in 86, the new company has been completely self-financing. I mean, it doesn't have any arrangements for overdraft facilities. So all the money it generates through gate receipts, commercial income, etc., we have to plough back into the game uh, and use for buying players. Steve Bull proving to be one of Wall's better buys. Oh, tremendous. I mean, Steve has now, well, I mean, his value, you can't estimate uh, really what his true value is, but uh, for £64,000, a uh, tremendous investment. To Steele, to the byline, the cross comes in. Is not far away? Dennison. Steele with a header. Steve Bull came.